everyone. Welcome into the Flippin' Hippos YouTube channel. I'm Star, and today we're going to take a look at jeans that sold on eBay. This is going to be part one of two. We're looking at jeans that sold on the platform in the month of July. And then in the second part, we'll take a look at jeans that sold in August. I'm a little bit behind on my what sold videos, and I didn't want to just skip doing them for those months. So we're just playing catch up here. Uh, these are still relevant brands to look for, relevant brands to sell. We're going to talk a little bit about them. I'm probably not going to go into so much as cost of goods and all of that that I do in my regular what sold videos. If you want all of that information, every Monday I put out a what sold on eBay video and I go into all of those details. But when I do the jeans centric videos, I just really want to talk about jeans, what the, what's good to look for, what's not good to look for. Um, sometimes I make mistakes I want to show you to help you avoid them and kind of talk about where we source and how we get our stuff. Um, usually I throw in what, what I paid for them anyway, but just to give you a heads up how these are different because these are just about jeans. I also do plush centric videos as well. I'll look at all of the plush that sold in each month on the platform of eBay. And then we just talk about plush. But if you want to see, you know, week by week, the highlights and the bolos and the bread and butters and all that tune in every monday if you're not subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to us it helps us feed our hungry hippos and you can hit the bell next to the subscribe and it will notify you when i come out with new videos that said uh let's jump right on in so we're looking at july i did not pull out every pair of jeans that sold i just pulled out um particular pairs that were either highlights or for some reason i wanted to talk about them and we did sell quite a few in July, considering two things. One, sales are slow. They're down for everybody. And jeans typically do slow down in the summer a little bit. But we sold quite a few. Then when I was looking at the sales for jeans in August, wow, that it really picked up. And actually, that's pretty normal. So I have hope that we might be coming out of the slump, but I don't know. We should be coming out of summer slowdown and going into Q4. But things are weird. Like ever since 2020, the shutdown and COVID and the economy going to putts, things are weird. I'm just going to take what I can get. I'm also going to continue to cross post on as many platforms as I can and take as many sales as I can get anywhere I can get them and try to keep our cost of goods as low as possible and buy wholesale as much as possible. You know, these are all things that you can do to help you uh, retain your bottom line a little bit better. If you're not cross posting, you should be. Not everybody shops on eBay. People shop on different platforms. More audience, more ads than your items, more sales. You can use List Perfectly to help you cross post efficiently and um, manage your income so that you're not having double sales on platforms. If you haven't taken the leap yet, you can try it for 30% off your first month with code LIST. Nope, code Flippin' Hippos. Let me try again. Try List Perfectly for 30% off your first month with code Flippin' Hippos. And I have a tutorial uh, playlist on this channel that walks you through how to use it. They have a Facebook group. They have tutorials. Uh, you will never be alone when you use List Perfectly. Somewhere, somebody's going to help you and show you all of the shortcuts and tricks you can do with it. It's a really good um, tool. But we're not here to talk about them. We're here to talk about sales. So keep your cost of goods down. Try to get as much wholesale as you can. Buy bigger lots. Go to ThreadUp. Go to all these places like... Uh, thrift america where roger uh, where robert and i get our plush and um cross post get some different streams of income coming in we can weather this guys we can do it i have hope because my jeans did good in the summer months and i mean for what it is i'll take it everything else was slow my jeans are still doing good right all right so these are banana republic now i would avoid the women's in this brand but the men's, I like. Men's clothing sells for more money, faster typically than women's, and you get less returns. Men know what they want, right? They get it and they buy it. And I think men's sizes are more true also. I think especially on jeans, if a men, if a men, if a men, if a man knows what he wears and he likes that brand and he buys that size, it's going to fit. Women's sizes are not always true. So... I just like selling men's because I feel like you get less returns and you can absolutely ask for more money. I like Banana Republic jeans for men, not women. I mean, you still could if you're going to the men's or getting them for like a buck a piece. They'll sell for like 20, 
18 to 22 bucks, depending on the size. Plus sizes are good. Um, but I like the men's. Uh, these actually, I believe, came in a thread up box. So I didn't even have twice. If it comes in a thread up box, it's getting listed unless it's completely damaged or poop. I pay what I pay for our wholesale boxes, whether it's from another reseller, from an, uh, one of our sources, or vendors we deal with for remotes. But I, we pay what we pay to get it shipped here right to our door. Everything in there that can feasibly be listed that isn't a complete poop brand or destroyed is getting listed because the really great stuff in the box is going to pay for it. And then everything else is pure profit. Keep that mindset too. And always remember that when you buy wholesale from like these bigger companies like Arbor Moats and stuff, um, sometimes 10% is going to be <coughs> can't list it, but you still make your money. So these are the Banana Republic Traveler. Um, so I would keep your eyes out. Pay a dollar or two for these, no more. Levi's 505. 505 is one of my favorite numbers in the Levi game. I love the men's more than the women's. Again, I paid five dollars for these and took a best offer 30. Had to check my notes. Do y'all ever write notes for yourself and then you can't read the notes that you wrote for yourself? And you tell yourself next time I'm going to write them better and then you still can't read them. So these sold for 30 on a best offer. They shipped in a padded, no, in a, in a flat white envelope. I keep making that mistake. If you guys have been following this channel forever, we've always shipped our jeans in padded flats. We have most recently switched over to the flat rate envelope. Because of our bottom line, we're saving some pennies. We're saving like 75 cents a package. Um got to do it. So yeah, these as well. All right. Rock Revival, Bolo brand. Y'all, if you ever see these, grab them. Pay $5 for them. I would pay up to seven or eight. I used to pay seven or eight for these in Pittsburgh, full price. Um, these came from Salvation Army. I believe I paid eight or nine. I don't even think they were half off. I did have two pairs at the same time. One came from a thread up box and one came from Salvation Army, and I got them both within the same week, which is weird because I don't often find rock revivals, right? Um, so I think these were the ones I got from Salvation Army. If they're not, they were only $1.74 or whatever in the throw that box. Um, these sold on a best offer, $45. What? People still have $45 to spend on jeans. They sure do when they really want them. And they're these really great brands. Always look for rock revival. Um, better yet, if you find them in men's. Lucky Brand is really hanging in there as a good bread and butter brand. Used to be a Bolo brand. I think this is the time in my video, you know, um, every video at least once, I like to mention that race to the bottom and complain. <laughs> Stop it. Don't do it. Your turds if you race to the bottom. Why do I say that? Because over the years, I have seen so many brands literally just trash like the entire market is gone i've seen brands like lucky brand that used to start at 40 and 50 and be bolos come all the way down to where i start them at 25 i usually take a best offer of 20 believe it or not these actually sold for 24.99 um but lucky silver miss me true religion seven for all mankind robert graham um vineyard vines orvis Pendleton. I mean, this is just off the top of my head. Brands that I have seen just, I can't whistle, but you get the drift all the way down. Don't do it. It, it. Racing to the bottom hurts all of us. Price things at what they're value. Have value in yourself and your time. That was my one time I get in this video to complain about the race to the bottom. I won't do it again, I promise, but just stop. So this is the Gloria Vanderbilt M.A. and the jeans. These are good bread and butter. When we lived in Pennsylvania and I could get jeans for 99 cents, I used to pick up any Gloria Vanderbilt I found for size 14 and up. Even used, I could sell those for like 22 bucks, 20 bucks. Uh, these are new with tags and they sold for $23.99. These were like $2 at a thrift on half off day. It may have been a dollar. Now that I think about it, I may have found them at the local honey pot next door. Um, but it's a good brand. If you can find right cost of goods. BKE, 
uh, Stella jeans. Best offer of $23 is what they sold for. And these are good jeans. I like BK. I think they are nice looking jeans. I think they're a good brand. I think they still have a good following. So I will still pick them up. The men's BKE with the names like Cody and Derek and all them. If you see those, pick those up. Uh, I used to start those around 50, I believe. Uh, they comp around 40 now. I'm not allowed to mention it again, but we all know why they start at 40 now. Because <laughs> uh, people raised to the bottom. But yeah, grab the men's if you see them. Pilker on the letterpress. This is an anthropology brand. It's an absolute bolo. Um, it prices it like higher end bread and butter, but it moves quickly. Pilcro and the letter press is never hard to move. And you can, if you have room, put anthropology in your title or somewhere in your description just for that keyword. Um, these sold for $30.62. Royalty for me. Here's some wanna bet about jeans. Any jeans that are slimming or shaping in any type of way, you want to grab the wanna bet about. And the But I Love You's do really well. They sell fast. They usually sell for $20 to $30, but they move quick. Um, I don't think I've ever had a pair stay in our store longer than a week. That is a really, really fast sell-through rate for jeans. Especially considering the Want to Bet About jeans are usually made by royalty for me or YMI, which on their own plain regular jeans are poop. And I would never advise you to, to ever source them. But these butt shaping jeans. Who doesn't want a better butt? So I snatched these up for, I think they were $3 or $2.50. Um, I took a best offer, $25, which is fine. That's why I listed them at $30, so I had room to wiggle. Four fifteens. I love four fifteens as well. Um, they are a good number as far as Levi's go. These are women's, and they sold for $34.99. Now, had I had these in a men's, I would have started at 40 or 45. So 415 is actually a really good number. I don't find these often. I most often find 505s, 525s, 311s, and 711s. <laughs> and those are all good ones to look for too. Speaking of 505s, here's another pair of men's. And these sold for $34.99. And I usually pay about $5 for these, half off. Um, I wish they were a little bit lower than you know, $10 so that even on half off day, they're five, but it is what it is when they sell for 35. We got to take what we can get guys. We can weather the storm. Um, but you got to keep your cost of goods low. You got to be smart when you're sourcing. And I honestly, you know, I've been talking a lot on this channel lately. I had Trish and Diane on to talk about bread and butter. If you didn't see that, I'll have it come up at the end and you can watch it if, if you have time. Um, I recommend watching it because we really talked a lot about bread and butter and volume selling I think a lot of our mindsets need to go to maybe that's the way to go. A lot of the people I see surviving right now and thriving even and, and doing okay while other people's sales are just really slow are people with a lot of listings, but they're consistent with their listings. So they have a high volume of listings, but they're consistently every day listing 10 to 20 or more. I don't know that listing one or two a day anymore is viable. I don't know that having a couple hundred in your store is viable. Um, unless you're selling, you know, very unique vintage antique items, one-offs, car parts, auto parts, you know, electronics, things that are, you know, super sought after and you're not competing with a ton of other people and it's not oversaturated. But if you want to do clothes and shoes and things like that, plush, I really feel like you have to be in the volume game and you really have to do bread and butter. Um, but if you want to hear more about that topic, you can watch the live show I did with Trish and Diane um, where we go into more depth about it. Hit the thumbs up before you leave, guys. It really helps our channel out a lot. Um, I've already asked you to subscribe, but you should if you haven't. Oh, do you know about our Facebook group? It's called Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod. Join us over there. There's a link in the description box, or you can just search for us right on Facebook. Uh, until next time, guys, go be productive. Go make some money. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Y'all are the best. Bye.